with Rachel Haney with Central Indiana Real Estate Investors Association. And we have a great vendor with us today. He was actually uh, on the most recent uh, master's meeting uh, a couple nights ago. So Patrick Grayson is here with us today with Stolco and company. So how are you doing, Patrick? I'm great. Thanks Good. for the introduction. And I have to just say, the deal that I went through for anybody watching this that was also on the master's meeting is literally in the process of falling apart as we speak. Oh no. And that's the funnest part about real estate. So <laughs> uh, uh, I was actually, I'm it's actually awesome. editing that video last night. So I was watching <laughs> the it. Deals, yeah. The, the ones that are like a home run are seldom mm -hmm. always easy. So mm -hmm. we're working on it right now, but yeah. we'll get it done. Yeah, there's a, an individual we've worked closely with and anytime we would get so excited about a deal, he, he's been in this business for um, since 2008. And he's like, I don't get excited about anything. He's like, I don't Not care anymore. how great of a deal it is. He's like, I just, I don't get excited about anything until closing time. So right. um, I'm not quite there yet. I get excited about everything. <laughs> But Patrick, thank you so much for being with us today. You are kind of a brand new vendor with Cyria. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, because of that, I actually have noticed you've been um, to quite a bit of the events, networking and things like that. And you've, you've been teaching some of the classes, the Lunch and Learns, uh, some great, great tools for people to use if you're a rehabber or an investor. Um, being a part of any of this, but um, yeah, the permits, the um, figuring all that stuff out. So that's uh, some really good classes that you've been uh, teaching. So we really appreciate that. Um, oh. But what you're here for today is tell us a little bit about Stolco. Um, tell us a little bit. Um, I would briefly discuss this about the name before, but sure. uh, the audience doesn't, haven't, hasn't heard about that yet. So let's talk about Stolco, uh, the beginnings, the, the history and, how you guys are doing now and what you guys, how you guys help investors, uh, members yeah. of Cyria. Yeah. So, um, you're correct. And I have been a Cyria member for a long time, um, since moving back home to Indiana here. Um, and, and I've always noticed that whether it's my investments or the business or anything, it always goes, things seem to go better when I'm going to the meetings, uh, because real estate is a very social. It's a very personal yeah. thing. Mm -hmm. Um, so I'll plug that really quickly for Seria memberships. Um, but, uh, we did make, you know, decide to make the jump to go over to the vendor side because we are as a company doing a lot more of the general contracting work for other investors, uh, specifically. So we don't do any homeowner type stuff. Um, mm -hmm. I'm still a full-time investor. And, um, uh, so I, that, that's kind of one of the, one of the unique, um, I guess, uh, things that I bring to the table for our clients is that I'm still doing deals. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm not going to steal your deals. So you don't <laughs> have to worry about that. I get that question a lot. Um, there have been deals where some of our Burr clients end up not wanting to buy it. And so we'll, we've come in and purchased it to flip mm -hmm. it for ourselves, but I'll certainly never steal anything. Um, Let's see, the name of the company, Stolico Designs, um, comes from my Polish roots. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, my grandfather actually, uh, when he came to the US for different reasons, they changed our last name from Gorski to Grayson. Um, so we're very much a, a Polish uh, uh -huh. family, but um, Stol in Polish means table. And at the time when I started the LLC, filed the documents and stuff, I was actually living in Colorado, which is the co and I was building custom furniture, um, mm -hmm. as kind of a, like a side gig thing to make money after hours or whatever. Mm -hmm. Um, so when we moved to Indiana, we were using that as the LLC to buy property and do flips and things like that. And just one thing led to another and it, it, it kind of started snowballing into this general contracting company. Mm -hmm. Um, so like I said, we specifically serve the investor market alone. Um, no homeowner remodels and stuff like that. Just we do a lot of work with out-of-state clients, especially uh, those who are, are doing the Burr strategy. I'm sure everybody's kind of familiar with that, where they're 
they're adding value to the home. So we do a lot of like bathroom and bedroom additions, mm-hmm. um, maybe changing the floor plan, or maybe we're building a garage onto the house to, to help force that ARV go up um, so that they can do their refi on the back end and go buy more and more and more, hopefully. Um, and then we also help other clients with, uh, with flip properties. Um, we certainly have a, a, a fair amount of flips under our own belt. So we, we still have a good pulse on the market and kind of the neighborhoods, how nice the things need to be. Do we have to upgrade to granite or can we get away with Formica countertops, things like that. Um, and we, we just use our experience to kind of tailor the remodel um, and, and work with the investors for that. So um, that's kind of what we're up to. Um, let's the reason I started the business, this is kind of important, at least it is to me. And, and this is why I really enjoy doing, um, like the lunch and learn trainings and stuff is because I started out completely on the investor side. Mm -hmm. Um, and I've been massively burned by contractors and I've had to kick people off of the job site who were smoking weed in the house and like all of these things that, I just call it earning your stripes as an investor yeah. Um, yeah. because I don't think anybody's immune to it. Yeah. Um, if you're out there if you hustling. you haven't experienced headaches with contractors yet, then you really haven't done anything with investing. Right. You if if you're out there moving investor, and shaking. But unless you've mm-hmm. actually received a headache or a migraine, then you really haven't done anything. Yes. So it's unfortunate. Um and that was my view on things was, was why, like, why does it have to be like this? Uh, mm-hmm. This is terrible, right? I, why does it have to be a normal thing to get mm-hmm. stiffed by a contractor? Like, mm-hmm. that's, that shouldn't be the normal way of doing business. And so what actually happened was I got wrapped up with a contractor um, here in Indy who had, had been working on two different flips for me. And, um, Things went south quickly and ended up kicking him off the job. I went in with my own people, finished things up. And um, right as we're about to hit the market with these two flips, um, he throws mechanics liens on three properties that we owned. Um, And mind you, he only worked on two. Mm -hmm. So he put liens on three different properties that we owned right as we're going to market. The houses went under contract really quickly and I was kind of stuck you know, trying to, trying to figure out, having to figure out how to either try to sell the properties or satisfy the liens or whatever. Mm-hmm. It was over six figures that, that he put liens on the houses for. That was a massive turning point in my professional and investing uh, mm-hmm. career. So all we set out to do um, was to just be an honest contractor. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, the, the things we work on, remodeling a house, uh, painting, flooring, all the, these are all relatively simple things. Why does it have to be so difficult to mm-hmm. find somebody that can, you know, tell the truth to the client? Mm-hmm. Uh, don't lie to me and tell me it's going to be a week when it's going to take a month, you know, like we're, yeah. we're smarter than this. So um, that's where it all started. And I just said, so I'm going to go out and get my contractor's license and, um, the convenience of that has been great. Uh, I can pull my own permits and things like that. Life is a little simpler, but then we just went for it and we got our insurance and our, our uh, bond and all that stuff. So we could, we could go legit contractor Mm -hmm. and, uh, and we just started doing jobs for people that we knew. Um, Mm -hmm. And it, it, it kind of grew from there. So um, as it stands today, the company consists of myself um, we have a team of, I'll call it management roles, CPAs and, and, uh, CAD drafters. Um, we, we use a lot of virtual assistants out of the Philippines to help with, uh, that like design type stuff, whether it's a set of drawings for a house or, um, accounting type stuff to run the business, um, marketing, things like that. Um, I have a, a full-time uh, superintendent, project manager who, who basically babysits our jobs, right. Mm-hmm. To make sure things are going yeah. as they should, that subcontractors are showing up and stuff is happening. Um, we, we keep in house, um, at least a few small crews, uh, of true employees. 
So we do keep a handful of actual W-2 employees. And then we also supplement that with subcontractors um, as needed. So we run it very lean, which is good for the investors, for our clients. Uh, we're able to keep our overhead uh, costs pretty, pretty minimal uh, doing that. Um, and we also move relatively quickly. So in the last three years or so of doing the remodels and, and flipping homes and all that included, we're hitting at about 30 houses a year that we're um, remodeling to some degree. Some of those are massive, you know, down yeah. to the studs, totally remodel yeah. and some are kind of rent ready paint and carpet type jobs. But mm -hmm. um, yeah, so we clip along, we do the best we can and we're honest to our clients. Mm -hmm. um, uh, what else, what else am I missing? Uh, I think that's, that's great. I think what people want to hear is that you are somebody that's reliable. I think that's the stigma, uh, from, you know, the experience that we've started with or that I've experienced with, but it's the reliability. Uh, there just seems to be a general attitude that contractors just come and go as they please. And unfortunately that's the stigma that that's there. So it's very hard to know, especially for an investor when there's a timeline and a time frame you know, will uh, this individual uh, uphold their promise uh, that they've stated. So it is, uh, it is trying to find a needle in a haystack to find a contractor that is actually will say what they do, will do what they say, you know. Um, so, but from everything you're telling me, it just really sounds like that's one of the values that your company really upholds and something that as investors, something that all of us, are continuously trying to find that contractor that we can use consistently and uh, not really have to worry so much about. So, cause once yeah. they, once you're found, you're pretty much golden. You know, you're, right. you've, you've earned someone's loyalty uh, when you've right. proven that. Um, yeah. It, you know, this has all been very much a learning experience um, yeah. for myself included as the business kind of evolves and grows. Um, we get a lot of, of, especially out of state clients who look at us as um, like, like we're perfect at executing a job or, or we're like, we're going to solve all the problems. And towards the end of the job, when, when we have our weekly conversations and, you know, I tell them that we're going to be two weeks behind what we initially thought it's like, Oh, you know, how could you let this happen? Or um, so we, we've had to do a better job of just explaining like, I'm not perfect, <laughs> you know, and nobody that works for me is perfect. And I've never been on a perfect job site. Mm -hmm. um, but our, our, one of the main things that Joe and I talk about almost every day is every job needs a hammer swinging every day. Mm -hmm. um, so not every job is going to be full bore, you know, three crews there working on everything all at once, but at an absolute minimum, we're trying to have at least somebody progressing the job every single day so that, if our clients ever show up or, or when yeah. we, you know, go in to check on a job, there's always some sort of progress. Right. Um, right. That's just been one of those, mm -hmm. you know, learning experiences. Um, but I tell people don't, don't always only take my word for it. Um, mm -hmm. Some of our best clients have boots on the ground here in Indianapolis who come by every week and they'll talk to us and they'll do a quick video walkthrough that they can send back to the owner. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that's great. Uh, there's a little, there, there's some accountability built in there. Um, I'm always a big fan of, of the more information we can efficiently share within our team, the better off everybody's going to be. Um, so treat it like any other part of your business. You don't just hire a bookkeeper and never check in on them mm -hmm. um, or never look at your financial reports. You, you talk to them and you ask right. questions. Yeah. Um, so we're, we're just part of the team. Um, so I, yeah, just treat it, treat it as though we're part of the team, not like right. a bolt on problem solver, uh, mm -hmm. you know, perfect executor. So to yeah, speak. yeah, for sure. Um, so 2020 crazy year. I don't know if it's impacted you at all, but 2020, how has your company been able to, is it surviving or is it thriving? Which, which of the two would you say your company's kind of at right now? You know, um, or, or you could have been one to another. I'm going to say maintain. 
Maintain. I'm going to okay. say we're, we're maintaining. Um, we're not necessarily looking to be like a massive contractor in Indy. I don't want to, I don't want the company to ever get to a point where it's unmanageable. Mm-hmm. Um, so, but, but we're, we're totally maintaining operations. We had some clients kind of pull back on, on new projects as coronavirus yeah. was first hitting and everybody was just kind of concerned for a month right. or two. Um, but those have picked back up. Um, I, you know, in hindsight, I, I chose consciously to work only for investors because it's, it's a certain um, personality type of client that I'm good at working with and mm-hmm. that I, I like working with as opposed to a homeowner. Mm-hmm. So we chose specifically to do that. And we've just been super lucky, I guess, in that mm-hmm. all the houses we work on are vacant. Mm-hmm. So, you know, when people were locked up at home for a month, um, we we were deemed a, an essential business, right, mm-hmm. for the real yeah. estate and industry. So we were still out working, um, and we certainly take all the the proper safety precautions while we're out there. But what we did was we just, you know, you two guys have been working together for a month, and you're going to continue working together until all this blows past, and you're in a house that's, you know ripped out to the studs anyways so it's not like (laughs) there's germs ever um probably asbestos and things like that to worry about but um so you guys are just going to keep working together you're going to show up every day to this vacant house and Mm -hmm. and it's been really cool because like they we have some young dads that work for us um stuff like that so like they have been super thankful in that they've gotten a full paycheck you Mm -hmm. know throughout this whole thing so yeah i'd say things have been going pretty good especially considering the circumstances and, yeah. you know, seeing what it's done to a lot of other businesses. So, yeah, for sure. I'm really happy to hear that, um, that that has been your experience, you know, unfortunately it hasn't been the same for everybody, but uh, real estate has been deemed an essential uh, uh, business to be in. And um, so very, very thankful that um, that's been the same case for you guys. Um so you did mention that uh, you have noticed whenever you are more involved uh, with Cyrio or some of the meetings and stuff that your business does better. Really happy to hear that. Um, I believe you became a vendor just recently. You've been a member, but you just recently became a vendor recently. Um, so tell me a little bit just about some of the classes that you're teaching uh, real quickly. Uh, so that way people can kind of know uh, what it is that you're teaching. And uh, I think they are around noontime once a month or every other month, something like that. But tell me a little bit briefly about the classes that you're teaching. So um, what we've been working with on, what we've been working with Cyria on is educating investors about contracting. Mm-hmm. So you ask an investor, they're good at pulling comps. They have a realtor they like. Mm-hmm. They, um, they're good at driving neighborhoods and, and running numbers on deals. But for some reason, there's always been this elephant in the room that's contracting, which is like a massive part of any investment. Um, and it, it just kept coming up that not, there's not a lot of information out there. A lot of people don't understand some of the things like permitting, Mm-hmm. Um, so I, I think that was one of the first ones was, was permitting, like, how does it work? Mm-hmm. Um, and so people are typing in these questions throughout the the zoom call. And it was like, you know, my, my contractor's telling me it's taking four months to get permits or things like that. And I'm like, no, <laughs> they're not, they're probably not turning it in or they're not doing what they're supposed to. So been able to, to yeah. provide information like that mm-hmm. back to the investors, um, because ultimately, uh, knowledge is power. Mm-hmm. And yeah. if your contractor is telling you certain things, then you, you can at least know to ask the right questions. Mm-hmm. Um, things change. The permit office is always trying to like deploy some new process or something. So things do change, but um, just educating that. And, and I think it's been cool because I've been on that side. I've had the contractor that's telling me it's taking too long and all this stuff. And so I kind of, figured it all out by myself and it was like, well, let's put this information out there um, so that other people can learn it beforehand and potentially prevent some of these issues. Um, The one coming up. Oh, I wish I knew the date so I could plug it. I think it's on the 24th. Um, But 
investors working with contractors. And so this is going to focus much more on like that relationship specifically and how it should be working. Mm -hmm. And so we, we touch on like how to find and hire contractors, but in my mind, I think the most important part the most beneficial part that investors are going to get out of it is how to protect yourself as an investor. Mm -hmm. Um, there's things out there that a lot of people don't even realize exist. Like if you're hiring a licensed contractor in Indy, they have a bond Mm -hmm. and people may even be able to spout that off, but nobody has any clue how it works. Mm -hmm. Um, so I've had to call like place a claim on some of our contractors bonds before. So I've been through it and I've seen it. Um, and, and there's been some instances where we've actually been able to, to use that to our advantage Mm-hmm. Um, really unique scenarios, right. but uh, I, I as a contractor, have been able to say like, "Well, you know, you go ahead and pay this, and we'll write the contract this way, and you're protected in this scenario because if I don't do what I said I would do, you can call my insurance company and get my ten thousand dollars out of my bond." Mm-hmm. Um, and they're like, "Oh my gosh, <laughs> like that's incredible!" Yeah. Um, yeah, and they're like, "That's incredible. You would offer that up?" And right. I'm like, "Well, I plan on doing what I." Right. signed up for yeah. it, so yeah. I'm not worried yeah. um, but it's it's kind of a black box and people you know we, we talked at the beginning about how it's earning your stripes to have problems with a contractor mm-hmm. and the very first thing that I realized when I got my own license was it doesn't take anything to get a contractor's license yeah. in Marion County yeah um and when it, people just automatically assume, especially a lot of like in, investors from California or other states, um, California is really unique because of their seismic issues and things like that. But they're like, well, you know, didn't you have to spend a week in a classroom learning the code book and all this stuff? I'm like, man, you get your insurance and you fill out the application and you pay your 200 bucks or whatever. Yeah. And you're a licensed contractor. Yeah. Um, yeah. And so that's why we get all these people who but they're licensed and insured like surely they're high quality contractors. And when you realize that the bar is set so low to go get that license, it's like mm-hmm. a light bulb goes off and they're like, that's why there are so many bad contractors out yeah. there. <laughs> yeah. 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 Well, thank you so much for sharing all of that stuff. Um, I think, you know, you're pretty transparent in the fact that your desire is to help people and, um, not only just to protect yourself, but to also protect um, these in, these investors and helping educate them so that they know what they need to do in order to do so properly. So uh, I think your classes are fantastic. And anybody who is listening into this, um, you know, I'll actually share the next class that will be up. Is it? It's this month, right? Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's this month. Uh, that your next class is so uh, that will be up people can click on that right away so they can easily register on there um but other than that patrick what do you have any nuggets that you want to give to our members and investors for syria any nuggets um i just looked and the training's on the 26th august 26th okay uh wednesday afternoon nugget number one (laughs) i I would say, you know, a lesson learned or if I would have treated it this way or known this years ago when I was Mm -hmm. first getting into it and and eventually getting burned would have been um, take the time to do more homework on contractors. Mm -hmm. Um, I thought I was doing enough where, I mean, I would even call the bond company and say, has anybody ever placed a claim on this guy's bond? Uh And, and they would say, no. And I'm like, cool, the guy's good. Or, you know, you can go on mycase.in.gov and look for any lawsuits with their name in it. Uh Um, So do a little homework, just like you wouldn't hire a realtor without a referral or anything, anything in life really that's, that's expensive and important. Um, Take the time to do a little homework, ask questions, talk to people, get a Syria membership, you know, go network with people. Uh Um, when, when things do go sideways, ultimately those are the people who can help you. Yeah. Um, yeah. So those are, that's kind of two nuggets wrapped in one. Right. You know, and, and just real estate is, is definitely a business that you, more due diligence that you do. And I think 
I, I don't want to say people are lazy about it, but and maybe they are, or they just don't know. But this is definitely a business that you have to do your due diligence on in order to be successful and to prevent um, any major hiccups or obstacles. Um, you know, if you, if people would just spend the five, 10 minutes looking up, making that phone call, I mean, it could really help just stay away from any major downfalls. So, yeah. um, but thank you so much, uh, Patrick, what is a good way to reach you? Email, phone number. What's the best so I'm going to send, I'm going to send people to the website, yeah. uh, stolecodedesigns.com. Yeah. So there's pictures and some information. I think those, those will link also to the social media pages where you can see more videos. Right. I, I don't do as much as I should, uh, but we do some video walkthroughs of different projects and stuff. Mm -hmm. And um, if you can see it on the screen, the handle for social is Stolco underscore designs. Okay. Um, so just reach out via one of those avenues and, and we'll get in touch. Sounds good. Sounds good. Thank you so much, Patrick. And I'm sure many of the viewers will be checking out your, your uh, next upcoming class. Uh, love it. All Thanks, right. Rachel. Bye. Bye.